столица Приморья, Атепельский регион, и всего Дальневосточного федерального округа России в пятый раз собирает глав ведущих стран Азиатско-Китайского региона, крупнейших инвесторов, представителей общественности, Members of the public and of the expert circles. This year, we welcome more than 8.5 thousand participants from 65 countries. Compared with the first forum, the representation grew more than twofold. We see that as a convincing sign of the growing interest for the Russia's Far East to the opportunities for cooperation, which offers, which are offered by this truly immense region, with no exaggeration. The power, the competitive advantages of the Far East include its talented and hard-working, energetic people, educated and ambitious young people. Those are new centers of science, industri industrial growth, and industries of the future. Those also include the rich reserves of natural resources, broad logistic opportunities such as the Northern Sea Route and other Trans-Eurasian routes. And finally, that's the proximity with the fast-growing economies with the most dynamic region, that is the Asia-Pacific region. Naturally, when we adopted the long-term strategy for the development of the Far East in the middle of the 2000s, that is 15 years ago, we focused on the maximum degree of openness for the region, for it to be closely integrated into the economic, transport, educational and humanitarian space of the Asia-Pacific region, and if we look at it more broadly, of the whole world for the development of international and border cooperation, investment and technological partnerships. And that is for the creation of new opportunities, first and foremost for our citizens, for their work and for their life. That was indeed a sharp historic turn. I would like to remind you that at the start and in the middle of the 20th century, and then during the years of the Cold War, many Far Eastern territories for example, the Vladivostok itself, where we find ourselves today, had mostly military significance and were, as we said back in the day, restricted areas. This was also reflected in the development of those regions. Social and economic development was lacking. And I would like to highlight that over the recent years, the situation has changed drastically, and we are proud that the Far East has become one of the symbols of the openness of Russia, of innovation and determination, and eliminating all kinds of barriers for business and human communication. Undoubtedly, we understand that such a result would hardly be possible without strengthening the atmosphere of trust and constructive cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region as a whole. We want these positive trends to be, to be developed further so that our common region would be safe and stable. Our relationships with India, China, the Republic of Korea, Malaysia, Mongolia, Japan and other countries of the Asia-Pacific region are based on the principles of respect and honest dialogue. I'm convinced they have great prospects which tally with the growing role that the Asia-Pacific region is to play in the coming decades. I believe that all those gathered here, the high-level guests that we have with us today, would agree with that. On par with openness, we also have one more key principle of our massive plans to develop the Far East of Russia, and that is their long-term and consistent nature. We concentrate our resources and step by step we administratively boost our efforts. We reach our goals and we set new tasks before ourselves. We always strive for more. Over the last 15 years we have managed to set the conditions so that the Far East would be on the track of advanced growth. And those are not just words. I can provide you some proof. A great beginning for such a work was the preparation for hosting the EPEC summit in Vladivostok in 2012. We have invested great resources in modernizing transport, business, and educational infrastructure in the city, in improving the capital of the region as a modern, dynamic 
city for people as one of the scientific and educational centers in the Asia-Pacific region. Of course, we understand that a lot remains to be done, but we have also achieved a lot. And then, based on our achievements, we will launch major infrastructure, transport, industrial projects. And at the same time, while we try to improve business climate in our country, we have also proposed drastically in you, in many aspects, unique instruments of support for business in the Far East, which are globally competitive. I would like to address all our colleagues who are going to invest in the Far East of Russia. Please use these opportunities. You should study them once again. Those are not just promises. This is actual practical steps which already function. So in the region, we have 20 priority development areas for social and economic development with special conditions for industry, preferential tax treatment, and government support measures. We have already 369 registered residents there, and they have struck deals for more than 2.5 trillion rubles, and they have, uh, uh, we will provide more than 60,000 new jobs. They have already invested 344.8 billions of rubles in investment and created 19.5 thousand jobs. Now we have the free port of Vladivostok, which spans across 22 municipal entities, and its purpose is to help the integration of the Far Eastern regions in the economic space of the Asia-Pacific region. They will help to boost our high-tech industries. The advantages of the free port were already used by 1,404 residents that have signed uh, their agreements, business deals, for 700 billion rubles, and they are going to create 68,000 jobs. They have already invested 95.2 billion rubles and created more than 10,000 jobs. This is a fact. And in overall, thanks to the measures of support, starting from 2015, the investors have already invested 612 billion rubles into our economy, and they have launched 242 production facilities and created more than 39,000 new jobs. As a result, we have the growth of industrial production in the Far East. It currently stands at 23% over the last five years, and this is three times higher than the average in the country. The center of new competences exchanges between the young people and international co cooperation, both experiments in educational science, new technologies. That is the Far Eastern Federal University, where we are gathered here today, as we are always gathered for this forum. And last year, 20,000 students studied at the university, and among them, 3,500 foreigners from 74 countries of the world. More than 200 professors from abroad are teaching at the university, and we plan to further develop research infrastructure at the university, including the mega science lab construction. We can be sure that the university in the future will be a part of the backbone of the joint educational space of the Asia-Pacific region. Dear friends, at the previous Far Eastern forums, we have talked about the significance of the Far East for Russia, about our plans and tasks to develop it, of the instruments of support for business, how we can tap into those instruments. I have briefly spoken about this uh, in my address today, although we understand and just now, with my colleagues during the working lunch, we talked about that without the people, without their energy, without their talents, without their interests in achieving results, no such goals could be reached. So in my address today, I'm going to focus on social and economic development and the social program of the development for the region. I believe it would be interesting not only for the people in Russia, but also for our potential investors who already work here in Russia that would 
mean that we would create a favorable social and economic climate and thus we would attract the needed labor resources. So yesterday, together with the leaders of the Far East region, we discussed new stage of development for the Far East. And the point is to turn to convert the economic gains of the recent years into a social growth spurt, into better quality of life for the people. So we need to have changes in healthcare, education, in improving cities and villages that would be felt by millions of people. And such changes should be felt not only in some distant futures I have already mentioned, not on the uh, years later, but very, very soon. And I would like to highlight that compared to 2005, the migration outflow from the Far East has decreased twofold. We need to turn the tide, and the Far East should not lose, but gain more people with their energy, power, and initiative. So I would like to go back to our talk at the working lunch. We discussed this topic, and my colleagues actually raised this question. What is the outflow of people from the Far East? That is indeed a very important question from the moral and ethical point of view and from the economical point of view as well. This region should be attractive for qualified personnel and for the young people because the young people are our future. Even more so that the Far East is a very young region of Russia. It has great demographic potential, which we need to keep and multiply. The overall birth rate is higher than the average in Russia out of 8 million and uh, 200,000 people living in the federal district, almost uh, 1.5 million are school children, students, and college students. They have victories in various sports competitions, international and all Russian scientific competitions. For example, recently Kazan hosted World Skills, World Skills Junior. And the gold medal was won by the ninth grade Andrei Mishkov from Milano Day. He was the best uh, when it comes to information technologies. And once again, I would like to congratulate him on that. So we have talented, gifted, creative people here in the Far East. They are capable to take on the world and reach ambitious goals. So the first and key task for the new development of the Far East is to support the young people, to do everything in our power so that the young people would have the broadest opportunities to get education, find themselves in life and in professional setting, to start a family and raise their children so that they would make their contribution into development of the Far East so close to them. And first and foremost, we need to boost uh, the volume of construction modern construction, that is, and it should be affordable for the people. And yesterday, with my colleagues, the leaders of the region, we discussed this very question, and we want to launch a special mortgage program in the region. And young families could take a mortgage to buy a flat or a house in the Far Eastern regions only under 2% interest rate per year. And recently, we have a preferential interest rate in mortgage that is a 5% interest rate. And my colleague said yesterday that it was not enough. And I would like to tell the leaders of other regions that it is not possible to do all around the country and that would actually have no effect because this measure is there to attract highly qualified personnel to the Far East of Russia. We need to launch this program this year, and it would last for five years. And why? Because we need to define and earmark the financing and the sources of financing in future, because this is a long-term program. We need for it to cover the first stage market, that is the new construction, and for individual construction for those people 
who have taken the Far Eastern hectare, the so-called Far Eastern hectare, as the source of financing, we can use um, uh, the money from the state program of the development of the Far East. And our healthcare system should be modern and accessible and affordable as well. And this primary concerns the primary healthcare, the closest to the people. And the informatization and equipment of um, the medical centers, the first aid and obstetric centers, and maternity hospitals, and our air medical service is very important. This is required for the development of the Far East. We have observed this all over Russia, but here in the Far East, we need to create a truly efficient healthcare system which could be comparable and even would be better than the traditional practices and standards. This is not a thing we can do in a day, but we need to start today and start with the innovative pilot projects. Indeed, we need to create a medical cluster in the federal uh, Far Eastern district with a special regulation setting that would allow us, without excessive formalities, to open branches and divisions of uh, international medical centers to attract the best experts and to use the medicines and methods that have proven effective abroad. This should function within the framework of the Russian jurisdiction. All nuances have to be worked out by the relevant agencies and ministries, and first of all with the Ministry uh, of Health of the Russian Federation. I have said multiple times that for the Far East we need to have special measures, advanced mechanism and flexible instruments which take into account the peculiarities of those massive areas and the demands of people who live here. We have decided to be experimental innovative when it comes to economy attracting investment and we have yielded a quite positive result as I have already said. We need to act in the same key when it comes to social development. I ask all the federal agencies, all the colleagues who are involved in developing the region to be led by this very logic, by the interests of the Far East, and that is the entire country. An important step for strengthening the educational awareness raising and humanitarian space of the country should be the opening of a new cultural, educational and museum complex here in Vladivostok. But at the same time, we need to drastically upgrade the whole network of museums, libraries, theaters, cultural centers, leisure centers, additional education centers in the far east of Russia to make them vibrant, interesting, modern centers which would attract people of all ages, children and young people. We have just discussed this very question. I mentioned our prior meeting for the third time and Mr. Shinzo Abe here said about the attractiveness and the tourism potential of the region. Yes, indeed, creating such a major all-Russian cultural and awareness raising center with branches of our leading museums such as the Tretikov Gallery, the Hermitage Museum, the Russian Museum, the Mariinsky Theater branch would undoubtedly increase the tourism potential of the region um, multifold. It is especially important that is development of culture for the um, small cities here and I would like to give you a few numbers. Out of 1,834 populated areas of the Far East, 1,614, those are areas where less than um, thousand people live, more than five and less than a thousand, and the distance might reach up to hundreds of kilometers. So we need to take that into account as well, and we talked about it with the leaders of the region. We need to adapt our all Russian programs such as county doctor and uh, county teacher to the conditions of the Far East. For example, we might increase the payments for physicians, physician assistants, teachers, especially those who come to the very small villages uh, in the Far East. We can increase those payments compared to the average in Russia for the Far East twofold. And undoubtedly we need to think about the future. It is closely linked to the young 
people and children today who love their region, who want to live and work here, they need to receive quality education regardless of their income and their status. That is why we need to provide employer-sponsored education and uh, special budget-financed openings for highly required specialties so that the young people uh, would be sponsored by the budget but also by the potential employers and they could be certain that jobs await them and they would be guaranteed to get a job. And the young people and people of all ages should have the opportunities to access distance education as well as telehealth, information resources and electronic public services, digital platforms and services which open up new horizons for the creation and launching of their own business. I would like to remind you that more than half of Internet users of our uh, planet live in the Asia-Pacific region, and that is why the Far East should meet the standards of the digital infrastructure which are set in the world, including uh, the high-speed Internet coverage. I would like to ask the government to take that into account when implementing uh, their national program Digital Economy of Russia. We need to have a digital environment which is comparable to the scope of challenges of our time and rapid technological advancements. That is why our second important strategic task, the Russian Far East, should become one of the global centers of high technologies and competences, new industries and new areas of production. That is the focus of the leading quality jobs for well-qualified professionals. Thank you. And first and foremost, for the people living in the Far East, for those citizens of Russia who live here in this region. And this is our principal position. We have the groundwork laid for that. And here on the Ruski Island, we have a massive innovative cluster. We are also advancing our space industry around the spaceport of Pastochny. Aircraft construction and gas processing is also developing here, as well as chemical industry. We are continuing to create the Zvezda shipbuilding plant, and we are going to focus on uh, increasing the exports of deep processing products. Again, this is our principal position, and I would like to draw the attention of Russian and foreign investors to this, the residents of advanced development areas and the free port of Vladivostok. So we increase the export taxes for round wood, for example, but at the same time, we are ready to back those who want to invest into boosting our capacities in timber uh, industry. At the same time, we create the preferential treatment for export of the ready-made products, including on the markets of third countries. In the same logic, preferences and support in exchange for deep processing will be used in other areas, including uh, maritime resources and mineral resources. As for safeguarding and careful use of our forest resources, this is a very important topic, and we should consider it um, in the scope of the entire country at the special meeting of the State Council. We understand the creation of a massive scientific and industrial center in the region is a colossal challenge. At the same time, this provides us great opportunities, and it's indeed very broad. So the benchmark of demands when it comes to efficiency of our measures and solutions should also be on par. At the same time, this involves the economy of the future, the support of young teams who implement uh, disruptive ideas and solutions. All around the world, startups led by young people are a massive locomotive force for technological development so that the number of startups would not only go up but so that they would grow and turn into medium-sized and then into large companies we need not only legal support we also need regulatory environment as well as efficient financial instruments so i suggest that we create a special venture capital fund in the Far East. We talked about it yesterday, and I agree with that. So I would ask the government to come up with special proposals because we have financial resources to support that. And the third strategic goal would be set before ourselves is also very ambitious, and it is in line with the global environmental agenda with the challenges that 
not only Russia, but also the entire planet faces today. We are talking about the development of the Russia's Far East as a global natural and tourism center, as an international experimental ground where we could test various approaches to resolving the most important issue for all of us. That is to how to strike the proper balance between economic activities, the development of ecotourism, accessibility of nature for the people, and at the same time uh, safeguarding our unique ecological systems. And today, the unique beauty of the Far Eastern areas attracts hundreds of thousands of tourists. In 2016, the region was visited by 5.2 million people, including 750,000 foreigners. And last year, almost 7 million people, and uh, around a million of them were citizens of other states. Uh, the regions include um, the uh, Lake of Baikal, the Kronetsky Natural Reserve in Kamchatka, the National Park Al Hanai in Zabakalia region. All in all, there are 64 designated conservation areas in the region of federal significance. And I would like to highlight that I have already tasked uh, my team to count and to define the borders of all those conservation areas, national parks, etc., etc. We need to accelerate this work all over the country, and in the Far East, uh, we need to do that first and foremost. Then we need to launch the PPP projects in tourism to invite responsible investors to offer them a preferential regime while keeping in line with the criteria of ecotourism. And we need modern information resources so that the people could swiftly and conveniently receive all the necessary information, when and where they can go, what tourist route they should choose, and foreign citizens could also receive uh, their visa very rapidly. And by the way, here in the Far East, uh, we have first introduced the e-visa system. Uh, this has facilitated the formalities for foreign tourists and entrepreneurs. And over two years, we have already issued more than 140,000 of such visas. All the development goals and the modern um, quality of life standards need a new level of mobility. And for the Far East, this is first and foremost a developed uh, air traffic system, accessible tickets for flying inside the region as well as to Siberia and central Russia and abroad. Up to 2024, 40 airports would be reconstructed in the Far East. And to expand local air traffic and to upgrade uh, the fleet of regional and local planes and helicopters, we need to use the capacities of aircraft plants in Lanode, Komsomolsk, Onomur, and Arsenyev. And the priority for all aircraft companies around the world is safety, security, and comfort. And for those companies working in the Far East, one more priority should be affordability of tickets. I guess it would be only rational that their companies who want to expand their presence in the Far East should have responsible and rational pricing policy, and they would have preferential access to clients in a much more advantageous routes. We have talked about that with the Minister of Transport, and this system works in practice, and probably we need to have it set in various documents. And for this region, it, this is well justified, and we need to think up of regulations to set it in stone, so to say. Dear friends, we have massive goals to develop the Far East. Major goals always translate into partnership and uniting our efforts. And we want to have such cooperation open for those who are interested in, in it. And we believe in the future of our cooperation and the future of the Far East of Russia. But for, for us to be successful, uh, as well as to be successful all over our country, we need for the society and community to be consolidated and to be ready to pitch in and to make a contribution and their energy to the overall result. We have uh, such an environment that all plans and all dreams will come true, even the boldest ones. I would like to wish every success to the participants of the forum and all the best. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. President, if I may, just a short clarification. Almost in one sentence, you managed to identify the key drivers of development, the true diamonds, I would say. Come uh, Samolsko, now more are producing the most modern planes, uh, more factory, and the Zvizda shipyard, and the advanced development territories. By saying that, do you believe that foreign investment might also go to such venues like Zvizda shipyard and the space launching facility? Certainly. Speaking of the airplanes factory, they already exist and there are foreign investments in place. We know it very well and the whole world knows that we have our amazing fighter aircrafts, SU, SU-30 or 34 world renowned two pluses SU-35 and the five generation aircrafts 57 but Superjet Suhoi Superjet is something that has been produced by us together with our Italian and French partners we are working on that and we are open for foreign investment we have nothing to hide although we do have something to hide yeah, but we'll be very cautious in causing the type of information that is to be restricted. But at the same time, we have all the opportunities to successfully develop our cooperation. As for the space launch facility, it's not a military facility. It is a civil one. And we're discussing who should be the one constructing the next stages of it. But generally, the space launch facility is designed to do the launches for civil purposes. We therefore believe it is not just possible to work together with foreign partners. We are very much interested in that type of cooperation and we very much invite them to participate. We already have joint projects with India in the space area. We actively collaborate on that with our colleagues from People's Republic of China. We have good cooperation with the European Space Agency. And we hope that in the future it would develop even further. We work with the United States as well. We are doing quite a lot of launches in the interest of our partners and also in the interests of the United States. And those launches are planned to be shifted to the Vostochny Space Launch Facility. So I do not see any single area that could be closed for cooperation with our foreign partners. On the contrary, we are very much interested in engagement of that type, uh, including the Zvizda shipyard. We visited it just yesterday with Prime Minister Modi. Of course, we'll be constructing the most advanced high tonnage vessels, and there will be all type of services that are suitable for working on the shelf in the Arctic zone, and in particular for transportation of LNG and oil products, any type of cargoes and freight. And yesterday, we discussed it with the Prime Minister that we'll be searching for opportunities of joint work, Probably there might be some specific vessels that be constructed here. It is an international cooperation that is flourishing in this way. So some of the vessels could be built in Russia, while some of them might be completed at the shipping yards in India and a renowned leading Russian company in the area. Uh, Rosneft, an oil and gas company, is the owner of one of the largest uh, processing uh, facilities in India. They purchased the controlling stock lately, one of the biggest refineries, and that includes one of the largest seaports in India. So we have a lot of potential points for cooperation. There are no issues that are closed for cooperation on the country. We're very much interested in that. Thank you. Before I give the floor to Prime Minister of India, I'd like to emphasize that Prime Minister uh, President Putin slightly commented on some things that were discussed between him and Prime Minister Modi in a uh, one-to-one -one meeting. When I took a look at the agenda of the meeting, I thought, think of a situation when an Indian businessman decides to come to Vladivostok, and the shortest journey would be via Korea, and it would take around 18 hours or up to 20 or 23 hours. Obviously, the speed of reaching India from Vladivostok and vice versa would be much faster if that is a maritime route as suggested by Prime Minister Modi between Chennai and Vladivostok, and today we see this type of high connectivity emerging. Mr. Prime Minister Modi, please take the floor.
एक्सलेंसी प्रेसिडेंट पुतिन प्रेसिडेंट बतूलगा प्राइम मिनिस्टर आबे प्राइम मिनिस्टर महाथीर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार दोबरी दिन वाद्यवस्तों के शांत और प्रकाश में वातावरण में आपके साथ संवाद करना एक सुखद अनुभव है सुबह का उजाला यहां से होकर दुनिया में फैलता है और पूरी दुनिया को ऊर्जावान बनाता है मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि आज का हमारा यह मंथन केवल फारिस्ट ही नहीं बल्कि पूरी मानव जाति के कल्याण के प्रयासों को नई ऊर्जा और नई गति देगा इस महत्वपूर्ण अवसर को मुझे हिस्सा बनाने के लिए मैं अपने मित्र राष्ट्रपति पुतिन का आभारी हूं राष्ट्रपति जी ने मुझे यह निमंत्रण भारत के आम चुनाव से पहले ही दे दिया था 130 करोड़ भारतवासियों ने मुझे मुझ पर विश्वास जताया और आपके निमंत्रण भी उनका विश्वास और मोहर लग गई फ्रेंड्स दो साल पहले राष्ट्रपति पुतिन के ने मुझे सेंट पीटर्सबर्ग इकोनॉमिक फोरम में आमंत्रित किया था यूरोप के फ्रंटियर से पैसिफिक के गेटवे तक मेरी भी एक प्रकार से ट्रांस साइबेरियन यात्रा हो गई है वाद्यवस्तु यूरेशिया और पैसिफिक का संगम है या आर्कटिक और नॉर्थन सी रूट के लिए अवसर खोलता है रूस का करीबन तीन चौथाई भूभाग एशिया है फोर फार ईस्ट इस महान देश की एशियन आइडेंटिटी को सुदृढ़ करता है इस क्षेत्र का आकार भारत से करीब दो गुना है इसकी आबादी सिर्फ छह मिलियन है लेकिन यह रीजन खनिज ऑयल और गैस जैसे प्राकृतिक संसाधनों का धनी है यहां के लोगों ने अपने अथक परिश्रम साहस और इनोवेशन से नेचर की चुनौतियों पर विजय पाई है यही नहीं कला विज्ञान साहित्य स्पोर्ट्स इंडस्ट्री और एडवेंचर मानव गतिविधि का ऐसा कोई एरिया नहीं है जिसमें फार इसके लोगों ने वादी वस्तुओं के बाशिंदों ने सफलता हासिल ना की हो साथ ही उन्होंने रूस और उसके मित्रों के लिए भी अनेक अवसर बनाए हैं फ्रोजन लैंड को फ्लावर बेड में बदलकर एक सुनहरे फ्यूचर का आधार तैयार किया है कल राष्ट्रपति पुतिन के साथ मैंने स्ट्रीट ऑफ द फार ईस्ट एग्जीबिशन देखा यहां की विविधता लोगों की प्रतिभा और टेक्नोलॉजी के विकास ने मुझे बहुत ही प्रभावित किया है इनमें प्रगति और सहयोग की अपार संभावनाएं मैंने महसूस की है फ्रेंड्स भारत और फारिस का रिश्ता आज का नहीं बहुत पुराना है भारत वो पहला देश है जिसने वाद्यवस्तुओं में अपना 
काउंसलेट खोला तब भी और उससे भी पहले भारत और रूस के बीच बहुत ही भरोसा था सोवियत रूस के समय भी जब अन्य विदेशियों पर यहां आने पर पाबंदियां थी वाग्दिवस्तोक भारतीय नागरिकों के लिए खुला था रक्षा और विकास के बहुत सा साजो सामान वाल्दी वस्तुओं के जरिए भारत पहुंचता था और आज इस भागीदारी का पेड़ अपनी जड़ें गहरी कर रहा है दोनों देशों के लोगों के लिए सुख समृद्धि का सहारा बन रहा है भारत ने यहां एनर्जी सेक्टर और दूसरे नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज जैसे डायमंड में महत्वपूर्ण निवेश किया है सखालीन के ऑयल फील्ड्स भारतीय निवेश की सफलता का एक उत्तम उदाहरण है फ्रेंड्स राष्ट्रपति पुतिन का फारिस के लिए लगाव और उनका विजन इस क्षेत्र के लिए ही नहीं भारत जैसे रूस के पार्टनर्स के लिए अभूतपूर्व अवसर लेकर के आया है उन्होंने रशियन फारिस के विकास को नेशनल प्रायोरिटी फॉर द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी घोषित किया है उनकी होलिस्टिक अप्रोच यहां जीवन के हर पहलू को इकोनॉमी हो या एजुकेशन हेल्थ हो या स्पोर्ट्स कल्चर हो या कम्युनिकेशन ट्रेड हो या ट्रेडिशन हर एक को बेहतर बनाने का प्रेयक प्रयास है एक और उन्होंने इन्वेस्टमेंट के रास्ते खोले हैं तो दूसरी ओर सामाजिक सेक्टर्स पर भी उतना ही ध्यान दिया है मैं स्वयं उनके इस विजन से प्रभावित हुआ हूं और इसे शेयर भी करता हूं भारत उनकी इस विजनरी जर्नी में कदम से कदम मिलाकर रूस के साथ चलना चाहता है मैं अपने अनुभव के आधार पर कह सकता हूं कि फार ईस्ट और वाल्दिवस्तोक के रैपिड संतुलित और समावेशी विकास के लिए राष्ट्रपति पुतिन का विजन जरूर कामयाब होगा क्योंकि यह रियलिस्टिक है और इसके पीछे यहां के मूल्यवान संसाधनों और लोगों की असीम प्रतिभा है उनके विजन में इस रीजन के लिए और यहां के लोगों के लिए सम्मान और प्यार झलकता है भारत में भी हम सबका साथ सबका विकास सबका विश्वास के मंत्र के साथ एक नए भारत के निर्माण में जुटे हैं 2024 तक भारत को 5 ट्रिलियन डॉलर की इकोनॉमी बनाने के संकल्प को सिद्ध करने में जुटे हैं तेजी से बढ़ते भारत और उसकी प्रतिभा की इस रीजन से भागीदारी एक और एक और एक ग्यारह बनाने का ऐतिहासिक मौका है फ्रेंड्स इसी मोटिवेशन से हमने ईस्टर्न इकोनॉमिक फोरम में हमारे पार्टिसिपेशन के लिए अभूतपूर्व तैयारी की कई मंत्री चार राज्यों के मुख्यमंत्री और करीब 150 बिजनेस लीडर्स यहां आए उन्होंने राष्ट्रपति के विशेष दूत फार ईस्ट के सभी 11 गवर्नर्स और उनके बिजनेस लीडर से मुलाकात की रूस के मंत्री और फार ईस्ट के बिजनेस लीडर भी भारत आए मुझे यह बताते हुए खुशी रही है कि हमारी इन कोशिशों के बहुत ही अच्छे परिणाम आ रहे हैं एनर्जी से लेकर के हेल्थ एजुकेशन से लेकर के स्किल स्किल डेवलपमेंट 
माइनिंग से लेकर के टिम्बर अनेक क्षेत्रों में करीब 50 बिजनेस एग्रीमेंट हुए हैं इनसे कई बिलियन डॉलर्स के व्यापार के निवेश की अपेक्षा है फ्रेंड्स फार के विकास में और योगदान देने के लिए भारत वन बिलियन डॉलर्स की लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट देगा यह पहला मौका है कि हम किसी देश के क्षेत्र विशेष को लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट दे रहे हैं मेरी सरकार की एक्ट ईस्ट पॉलिसी ने ईस्ट एशिया को एक्टिवली एंगेज किया है और आज की यह घोषणा एक्ट फॉर ईस्ट का टेक ऑफ पॉइंट साबित होगी और यह मेरा पक्का विश्वास है यह कदम हमारी इकोनॉमिक डिप्लोमेसी में भी एक नया आयाम जोड़ रहा है मित्र राष्ट्रों के रीजन्स के विकास में हम उनकी प्राथमिकताओं के हिसाब से एक्टिव भागीदार बनेंगे फ्रेंड्स भारत की प्राचीन सभ्यता के मूल्यों ने हमें सिखाया है कि प्रकृति से उतना ही ले जीतने की जरूरत है हम प्राकृतिक संसाधनों के संवर्धन पर विश्वास करते हैं प्रकृति के साथ यही तालमेल सदियों से हमारे अस्तित्व और विकास का अहम हिस्सा रहा है फ्रेंड्स जिन देशों में भारतीय डायस्फोरा है वहां के लीडर्स जब भी मुझे मिलते हैं भारतीयों के श्रम ईमानदारी अनुशासन और निष्ठा की भरपूर प्रशंसा करते हैं भारतीय कंपनियों ने कारोबारियों ने दुनिया भर में कितने ही क्षेत्रों के विकास में योगदान किया है वेल्थ क्रिएशन का काम किया है साथ ही भारतीयों ने और हमारी कंपनियों ने स्थानीय संवेदनाओं और संस्कृति का हमेशा आदर किया है मुझे पक्का भरोसा है कि भारतीयों का पैसा पसीना प्रतिभा और प्रोफेशनलिज्म फार इसमें तेज विकास लाएंगे ईस्टर्न इकोनॉमिक फोरम में भारत ने पार्टिसिपेशन के जो उत्तम परिणाम आए हैं उन्हें आगे बढ़ाने के लिए मैं फार ईस्ट के सभी 11 गवर्नर्स को भारत आने का निमंत्रण देता हूं फ्रेंड्स मैंने और राष्ट्रपति पुतिन ने भारत रूस सहयोग के लिए एम्बिशियस टारगेट रखे हैं हमारे संबंधों में हमने नए आयाम जोड़े हैं उनको विविधता दी है संबंधों को सरकारी दायरे से बाहर लाकर के प्राइवेट इंडस्ट्री के बीच ठोस सहयोग तक पहुंचाया है उनको राजधानियों से बाहर स्टेट्स और रीजन तक ले गए हैं हमने हर क्षेत्र में सहयोग को अपने स्पेशल एंड प्रिविलेज स्ट्रेटेजिक पार्टनरशिप के सांचे में बढ़ाया है ढाला है हम मिलकर स्पेस की दूरियां भी पार करेंगे और समंदर की गहराइयों से समृद्धि भी निकाल के ले आएंगे फ्रेंड्स इंडो पैसिफिक रीजन में सहयोग का नया दौर हम शुरू करने वाले हैं व्लादिवस्तोक और चेन्नई के बीच जब शिप चलने लगेंगे जब व्लादिवस्तोक नॉर्थ ईस्ट एशिया के मार्केट में भारत का स्प्रिंग बॉर्ड बनेगा तब भारत रूस की साझेदारी और गहरी होगी और फलेगी और फूलेगी तब फार ईस्ट एक और यूरेशियन यूनियन और दूसरी ओर ओपन फ्री और इंक्लूसिव इंडो पैसिफिक का संगम बनेगा इस क्षेत्र में हमारे संबंधों का मजबूत आधार होगा 
रूल बेस्ड ऑर्डर सोवरनिटी और टेरिटोरियल इंटीग्रिटी के लिए सम्मान और अंदरूनी मामलों में दखल से परहेज फ्रेंच मशहूर फिलोसोफर और लेखक टॉल्स्टॉय भारत के वेदों के अपार ज्ञान से बहुत प्रभावित थे और यह वेद वाक्य तो उन्हें बहुत पसंद था एकम सत विपरा बहुधा वदंती उन्होंने अपने शब्दों में इसे ऐसे कहा था ऑल दैट एग्जिस्ट इज वन पीपल कॉल दैट वन बाय डिफरेंट नेम्स इस वर्ष पूरा विश्व महात्मा गांधी की 150वीं जन्म जयंती मना रहा है टॉल्स्टॉय और गांधी जी ने एक दूसरे पर अमित प्रभाव छोड़ा था आइए भारत और रूस की साझा प्रेरणा को हम और मजबूत करें एक दूसरे की तरक्की में और अधिक भागीदार बने अपने शेयर्ड रीजन और विश्व के स्टेबल और सिक्योर भविष्य के लिए मिलकर के काम करें ये हमारी साझेदारी के नए अध्याय की शुरुआत होगी मैं जब भी रूस आया हूं तो भारत के लिए यहां प्यार मैत्री भाव और सम्मान ही पाया है आज भी इन्हीं भावनाओं का अनमोल उपहार और गहरे सहयोग का संकल्प यहां से लेकर के जा रहा हूं मैं अपने मित्र राष्ट्रपति पुतिन का विशेष धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगा हम जब भी मिलते हैं तो बहुत खुले दिल से और बहुत समय लेकर के मिलते हैं कल अपनी तमाम व्यस्तताओं के बीच उन्होंने मेरे साथ अलग अलग स्थानों पर कई घंटे बिताए और रात के एक बजे तक हम एक साथ रहे मेरे लिए ही नहीं बल्कि भारत के प्रति उनके मन में जो प्यार है वो उसमें झलकता है मुझे यहां की और भारत की एक और सांस्कृतिक समानता दिखाई दे रही है मेरे होम स्टेट गुजरात में बाय बाय की जगह बाय बाय नहीं कहते हैं बाय बाय की जगह आओ जो कहते हैं जिसका मतलब है आप फिर जल्दी आइए यहां कहते हैं दसवीं दानिया तो मैं आप सबको कहता हूं आओ जो दसवीं दानिया बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद स्पासीबा बलछोई गवर्नर मोर्न